Alrighty, here's a uh, little interesting test we're going to do um, to go along with the conversation about superconductors at the moment and how that might work in regards to um, inductive kickback and also does it take any power or energy to create a magnetic field around a coil when we power it up or is our loss simply um, the current through the coil uh, being burnt up as resistive losses. Here we have two identical coils, numbers one and two. If you can see that, yep. So we've got number one and number two, um, exactly the same formers. Both have 200 turns. Um, both same length copper wire, both have the same resistance value. So, and they will be both used on the same core we have here. Um, so to check our resistance value, we can simply go over here to our power supply. We will take coil one, I have it limited to, uh, I'll do that, 100 milliamps. And we can simply put our power supply across our coil like so. 104 milliamps, 280 millivolts. And we take coil number two here. Hook that onto our power supply. 104 milliamps, 280 millivolts. That tells us that the resistance in each of these coils is exactly the same. So um, our resistance is the same, our number of turns is the same, our former is the same, all the clip leads are the same, length of wire is the same, the core we are going to use in this experiment is the same. The only difference is number one here is inductive and number two is not. So number one will create a magnetic field and number two will not. Um, which you probably missed all that because I forgot to uh, put the camera back down. But anyway, we went all through that. So um, we know the difference between one and two. The difference is one will produce a magnetic field and number two will not produce a magnetic field. Um, Alright, so our circuit here, I simply have channel 2 on the scope placed across our 100 ohm resistor. And we're going to be triggering the transistor with our signal generator. We have a cap in here to smooth out the pulses. That is a 10,000 microfarad cap. This meter here um, measures our current. And our current will be measured at um, the voltage and our voltage will be 12 volts. So 12 volts for whatever current we're using here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to test each coil on the core in the circuit. And if we supply the circuit with the same amount of power, we'll be able to tell how much each coil is consuming. Um, due to what we are burning off in this 100 ohm resistor. So we'll be looking at the um, RMS voltage across our one, a 1 ohm resistor. Sorry, not 100, it's 1 ohm. So um, if we were to put one coil on here and supply it with a set amount of power, the circuit as a whole, and our resistor is burning off, say, 100 milliwatts, and we put another coil on, <clears throat> our other coil on and the same amount of power is delivered to the circuit and our resistor then is now burning off 150 milliwatts of power we can um, safely guess that one coil is consuming more power than the other or dissipating more power than the other <clears throat> all right so uh, back to our coils you will see here well, i hope you can see there um, we have our inductance meter there 
lift that up a little bit for you so you can see the numbers. So coil number one which produces the magnetic field um, in order to do that we'll have to have inductance. So coil number two which does not induce a magnetic field or produce a magnetic field should have no inductance. What that also means is the coil with inductance um, when we look at our scope trace across our current um, we should see a steady incline in current through that coil. The coil without inductance we should see a current trace that goes vertical and then flat across the top. <clears throat> Why? Because this coil produces no back EMF and this coil produces a back EMF. So we're going to measure the inductance value simply by placing our coil across our inductance meter. <clears throat> so that coil there has 3.4 millihenries of inductance when it's on the core. Our number two coil, when we put that on, should be very close to zero. We now see our inductance value is 0 0.09 millihenries. So not quite perfect, but nonetheless it will do the job for what we are going to show here. Alright, so um, we're now going to hook our circuit up. Like yay. Turn our current back up, which we have. Switch our meter back on. We no longer need this one. Alright, so the first coil we're going to test here is number one. Now I'm going to have to, because of the uh, coils, although identical, because one um, produces a magnetic field um, and a back EMF, one does not, I'm going to have to wind the signal generator duty cycle down a little um, so as we can get our same power input. And then we can have a look and see how much power is being dissipated across our resistor with that same amount of power, we can also look at the wave shape um, of our current trace and see how that looks. We also have a little coil here. So if we have inductance, we should be able to place this here on top and our LED should light. If we don't, the LED won't light. Alright, so we're going to switch on our signal generator. Now, because we're building a magnetic field with this coil, we can see we have our inductive kickback discharge across our neon here, so we know that's there. We are using 107 milliamps there at exactly 12 volts there. Now we're going to look at our current trace. So our current trace is showing us um, the typical current trace of an inductor where the current rises in a linear fashion, fashion um, and you'll see that I have it switching off before peak current is reached but that is the waveform we want to look at. At the moment I'm on a 16% duty cycle we're running at 400 Hertz um, and that is the current trace we have. The RMS value across our 1 ohm CVR is about 200 I wonder if I can increase that size there uh, where am I, where am I, where am I one of these, somewhere hidden here and I keep on forgetting where we are if I go to large select that uh, there we go, we've got it so 297 millivolts RMS across our 1 ohm CVR. 
So that's just series connected with our coil. So our coil, um, when we calculate that RMS voltage, we can calculate how much power is being dissipated by our 1 ohm CVR. And thus, that is subtracted from the input power of 107 milliamps at 12 volts. And that will tell us how much power our uh, coil is dissipating. We'll go back to our little coil here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Now if I get something metallic we should hear a hum. And because we're increasing the inductance of the coil by whacking this big piece of steel on top, we can see our current goes down as well. Um, we can take our little sniffer coil here and we can place that on top of the um, coil's core and we can see we do indeed have induction. So number one coil is doing exactly what it wants or what it should be doing. What we're going to do now is switch the signal generator off. Now I'm going to drop this down to a 9% duty cycle and I know it's got to be around there from previous tests. We're going to take our inductive coil off and we're going to put our non-inductive coil on and if all things are equal we should be drawing about the same amount of power on that duty cycle 107 milliamps exactly and we are still at 12 volts now we're going to have a look at the current trace So as you can see now, our current goes straight up, almost vertical. So our coil is very close to being completely non-inductive. Now what we want to know, we know we've got the same power input. What we want to know is how much um, power that non-inductive coil is dissipating and how much we now have been dissipated in our CVR. We have 366 millivolts RMS now across this CVR, which means we now subtract, subtract that dissipated energy from our total input, which is exactly the same as before, um, and we can work out how much this coil that does not produce a magnetic field is dissipating, and as you can work out from those numbers, it is far less we have no noise. You can see that the current does not change when we add this big hunk of steel on top like it did before. We take our little sniffer LED right after I put you back where you should be. Okay, so we try again. We've got our big hunk of steel we're putting on there on top of the um, core. Our current is not changing. And we take our little sniffer light here, we put it on and you can see absolutely no induction at all. So the only difference between these two coils is that um, this one produces a magnetic field and this one does not. This one consumes less power than the one that produces the magnetic field does. You can also see we have no inductive kickback at all. So um, I think that answers the question whether or not it takes energy to create a magnetic field. So um, the myth about the magnetic field um, creating magnetic field comes at no cost is um, therefore debunked it certainly does require energy to create a magnetic field um, and we've clearly seen that here we kept our input power identical and we've seen that with coil 1 we dissipated less power across our CVR than we do with coil 2 
meaning that coil 1 was dissipating more power than coil 2, even though those coils have the same resistance value as far as um, the copper wire goes. So myth busted! It does indeed take power, and quite a bit, um, to produce that magnetic field. So, um, and of course, because of the very same wire resistance, uh, we do not get that same amount that it took to produce that field back through our inductive kickback. Um, so how does that relate with a superconductor? If a superconductor has no resistance, um, such as number two coil here represents, um, in that the resistance added to the circuit comes from our um, back EMF, <coughs> which is effective resistance, um, the superconductor, like this coil here, will not produce a back EMF. And as you can see, or you did see on the scope, the current goes straight up. Which is exactly what will happen with a superconductor. So your superconductor will have no voltage across its terminals. However, the power, and will not dissipate power itself, the power will be dissipated in the source, or your power supply. So um, no matter how you look at it, you cannot produce a magnetic field at no cost. Alright, I hope that uh, puts that one to bed. Magnetic fields do come at a cost to create. Um, once they are built, <coughs> um, once the magnetic field is formed, then that is when it does not cost anything to maintain that magnetic field we will simply have our IR losses uh, through the coil. But when you are producing a magnetic field or building a magnetic field, as we clearly seen in this test here, um, it does indeed cost us in energy. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next video.